morning guys today we're going to be talking about another group of fish much like the glasses that we spoke about we're going to be talking about a group of fish rather than an individual species itself uh, these that we're talking about are going to be the mullet now mullet go by a whole lot of different names but in general if you talk about a mullet people know what you're talking about versus going into the individual uh, common names for the species you're looking at three main genuses um, you do get there are a few more I think about about five or so but you're looking at muggle cephalus which is your flathead mullet often called a bull mullet as well uh, very very big head big eyes um, and they've got that flattened top part of their head like that but yeah that's one of the bigger mullet that we get you get them up to about 80 centimeters in length uh, not very commonly caught but they are still, um, they do catch them every now and again, little bits of sardine. Then the next two species, uh, talk, to them, talk about them together, but because they fall into the same genus, but they're two different sets. It's Lisa tricuspidens um, and Lisa richardsonii. So tricuspidens, the, the name comes from three pointed teeth. So their teeth are actually got, they're very, very tiny, but they got three points to them. Um, they are your striped mullet. Now the striped mullet is probably the most caught mullet in terms of rod and line angling, not in terms of netting. But they, you can actively target them, especially in case of it. Uh, they are very, very strong fish. They're often called Springer, but in my mind that's incorrect because Springer is now Elops Marshata. It's not, it's a completely different fish. But yeah, that's where common names become a little bit, a little bit tricky. Excuse the rant. Um, but yeah, striped mullet, they overall sort of cylindrical but their stomach is slightly more distended so you've got a, a cylinder type fish but the stomach pushes down a little bit more so it becomes a lot a bigger area very very silvery uh, got the scales in them and they've got these stripes that run all the way along the body um, smallish head and mouth for for the size of the fish uh, and they they mainly feed by what we call detrital feeding so they actually filter through the sand. They, they pick up sand and they filter it through their, their, their gill rakers and then they pick out anything that's sort of worth eating. They do also pick stuff off the surface. So much like glasses and a lot of other opportunistic fish, they're going to take some more insects that blow onto the surface. They will take little bits of, uh, of fish. So when it comes to targeting them, the, the secret is firstly a white float. You want to make it out of a broomstick handle painted white. That gives you the enough weight to cast it as far as you can. And then you do a little, similar to a carp rig, a baby shoe trace. You've got a three-way swivel, two short little hooks, and it's probably about that long max, with uh, two tiny little hooks. I use the little uh, ring tuners, the smallest size I can get my hands on. And then you take the bread and you break it into little squarish, squarish size pieces and you just rig it onto this so you get almost two little legs sticking out the bottom of the float throw that out let it drift around and you're in with a very good chance of catching a mullet uh, otherwise little bits of sardine work very well on the coast and yeah the the guys do also cast net for them and say net for them your other species that we mentioned lisa richardsonii that is what we call the the hardo down in the cape so that's the fish that they they dry out and they salt and it turns into bokoms. If you've ever had bokoms, it's an experience. Um, but yeah, that's the Lisa Richardsonia. Also very, very similar. Um, all these guys mature, the bigger guys, the, so your blue tail mullet, your flathead mullet, your striped mullet, all mature at around 40 centimeters, so quite a big fish. And then your, your harder, your Richardsonia is gonna mature around 20 centimeters because they're generally a slightly smaller fish they don't grow as big um, probably to about 60 centimeters or so um, but yeah mainly for them you don't really catch them on on bait or anything but you will get them on uh, with a cast net or with a seine net in an estuary so all these fish utilize estuaries so another good uh, example good good cause to protect the estuaries not to, to throw your litter away in that because that all gets washed into the estuaries um, and pollution does obviously cause a decline in their, their abundance but yeah the mullet is an extremely important food fish they in the east are highly regarded they've, they've got very nice flesh and very white white flesh and a very nice firm firm flesh for the fish 
um, which are a very very important prey fish. They're eaten by pretty much any fish that you can imagine including Garrick is probably the most common and, and cob and then down in the cape your bronze whalers really really love a mullet especially if you can skin it um, and also the smooth hounds literally anything you can think of will eat a mullet but yeah they're fairly slow maturing uh, but they are quite uh, prevalent you don't they're not a very rare species uh, in general and yeah as we mentioned quite a few different species within the different genuses but you can treat them as a whole most of them are are, are very similar so yeah, mullet, very important fish, very tasty fish. They basically detritivores, uh, feeding on little copepods and all that kind of stuff. It's in the sand, and yeah, very important bait. Nice to eat if you want to. Cheers, guys.